Welcome back to Steel City Sports. So today I want to go over five reasons why the New York Jets are going to fail in 2024 and why I think they're the most overrated team going into this season. So starting off with number one, Aaron Rodgers, the last time we saw him play in Green Bay was bad and people seem to like forget that that happened. His final year in Green Bay, he was mediocre in every single statistical category and you can't point at the fact that the team was bad because just a year later, Jordan Love with the same exact team, led that team to the playoffs and beat the Dallas Cowboys in a playoff game. So it's not like the roster was bad. Matt LaFleur is a really good head coach. So the only realistic explanation for the 2022 Green Bay Packers was the fact that Aaron Rodgers was mediocre at best. That was two years ago. That version of Aaron. So now he's not only two years older, but on top of that, coming off an ACL injury and... He's 40 years old. So the recipe for Aaron Rodgers being an elite level player, I think is completely unrealistic. I think you have to do mental gymnastics to really think that Aaron Rodgers is going to be an elite quarterback in 2024. Like it would already be difficult enough had he not come off the ACL injury playing at the age of 40, but that is one of the most gruesome, if not the most gruesome injuries in the in all of sports. You know, we had uh, my buddy an athletic trainer on go in and give me like all the details on the channel about how that specific injury destroys a player. And so coming off that injury at 40, and the last time we saw him two years ago, he wasn't that great either. That's point number one. Point number two is, is Robert Sala even a good head coach? Which I think at this point in time, probably not. I think if he if they don't make the playoffs this year, I think he's done, and I would be shocked if he got another head coaching job in the NFL. I think he's a really, really bright defensive mind. I think in 20, the 2024, um, the way the NFL is constructed right now, and I always talk about this, I have an offensive bias towards coaches, but the job Robert Sala should have in 2024 is defensive coordinator. Um, I don't think he's done anything over his tenure with the Jets to prove that he's a competent head coach. He's really good at running the defense. But head coach isn't just running the defense. It's running the entire team, and they've been a shit show under Robert Sala's tenure. Um, the way he's managed, particularly the offensive side. I know he's a defensive guy, but like I just said, he's the head coach. You have to run the whole team, and the, the way he's ran the offense has been you can argue one of the worst situations in the entire NFL, the way he handled Zach Wilson last year, a mess. Um, so yeah, Robert Sala, I don't even know if the guy's a good head coach. And my third point, their offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett, is probably the worst offensive coordinator in the NFL. Now that that moron, uh, Matt Canada, is gone from the Steelers, Nathaniel Hackett has to be the worst offensive coordinator in the entire league. We all know he's only there because he's Aaron Rodgers' buddy. In terms of his actual resume, uh, you look back at his work, his one year without Aaron, his one year in Denver as the head coach was a fledgling disaster. It, I mean, the 2022 Broncos were one of the worst teams in the NFL. With the amount of talent that they had, their defense was incredible. I think I, I can't forget the stat because it was a couple of years ago, but I think it was something like if the offense would have just scored 17 points per game, they would have been a playoff team. That's how dominant their defense was. But they turned out to be a six-win team. That's how dreadful their offense was. And I know Russ gets a lot of that blame as well, but you know, just a year later, Russ went back to being a pretty good quarterback. So that's point number three is the fact that their offensive coordinator doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And then point number four is their offense is basically filled with, it's like an emergency room after a 15 car pileup on the LA highway. Like look at all the injury prone players on this offense. It's literally held together with band-aids and bubble gum. Bryce Young, everyone, or excuse me, not Bryce Young, Brees Hall. I just made a video about Bryce Young. That's why. <laughs> but uh, Brees Hall, He's expected to have like this massive year. Everyone's expecting Brees Hall to break out this year, which I think is warranted. The guy's really talented. But you can't ignore the fact that the guy had a gruesome injury, which ended his rookie year. So he's injury prone. You have Mike Williams, who's probably the most injury prone player in the entire NFL. He's probably missed more games than he's played since entering the, N the NFL. Extremely talented. I like him a lot, but the guy's made out of glass. And he's going to be expected to do a lot in this offense because... 
Garrett Wilson, we all know he's a stud, but after him, Mike Williams is really the only other dependable target on the Jets in, the, in their wide receiver core. So that's two guys right there, Brees Hall and Mike Williams, two guys that are going to be like heavy parts of the offense on top of there, and we just talked about his injury problems. Now let's look at the offensive line which is they say they revamped it. I don't really consider it revamped at all. You brought in two banged up old guys, and that's supposed to save their offensive line. Morgan, Morgan Moses isn't even cleared to play football right now because he's still hurt. And Tyron Smith is a Hall of Fame player. But again, similar to what we just said about Mike Williams, is probably one of the most injury-prone players in the entire NFL. So you basically have like a nursing home on offense. A lot of guys in key positions, your offensive tackles, your star running back, your number two receiver, and your quarterback are all guys that have severe injury histories. And then point number five, and this is an easy one. This is one a point that I was making last year, is just simply look at their division. They have two offensive juggernauts they have to go up against in the Buffalo Bills who have won this division four years straight. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to see the Bills winning the division again. And you also have to compete with the Miami Dolphins. I have my problems with the Dolphins. I think they had a fucking terrible offseason. We already talked about that in previous videos. But they still have the core of that high-powered offense together, and they're still going to be a really good regular season team. So you combine that with the fact with all the glaring problems I have, their division's really tough. I just think... It's hard for me to envision this working out. I just think there's a lot working against the New York Jets. And even though I like their team on paper, I like a lot of their players, I just think there's too many red flags with this team. And I ultimately see them being like an eight or nine win team. And what's to say Aaron doesn't get hurt again? Like we said, he's 40 years old off that gruesome injury. There's no guarantee that Aaron even plays the entire year. So those are the reasons why I think the Jets are the most overrated team, most overhyped team going into the 2024 NFL season. Let me know your thoughts on all this down below. Please like and subscribe.